Recently, we have seen a rise in super subs coming out of nowhere on the biggest of stages and playing out of their minds. These super subs I'm going to dive into have changed the pro Valorant world very soon after joining the starting lineup, usually under stressful conditions that would have hindered most other players. We're going to go through the astounding journeys of three substitutes that quickly became unlikely heroes. And you could be my hero right now and finally hit the subscribe button as we're quickly reaching the end of the Valorant season and I'd love to pass 12,000 of you guys before the world champion is crowned. As even when the season does end and we have a six month long off season, I'll keep you entertained with some really high quality documentaries I've been working on for months now in the background. You don't want to miss out, so hit the subscribe button and turn on those notifications for me. And let's dive into these standout stand-ins. From tens is so let's start with the first ever super sub that a lot of fans forget, that being the clout god Tens, who just days before the regional masters joined the team as a substitute from Cloud9, as Sinatra was suspended due to allegations. But even with Tens having zero prep time with the rest of Sen, he went off in the four match run to win the regional trophy. He picked up an event high ACS, KD, and first kill to death ratio. Absolutely insane, and while this event would already make him well known, he became a dream sub that any team would pray to have now, with him qualifying for the first international masters, with Ten still not a permanent member, with the situation with Sinatra still so fresh at the time, and Ten still being under contract with Cloud9. But in Reykjavik, the decision on whether or not he would stay as a core member of this Sentinels roster was decided on the server, as we saw a prodigy stand-in be born. While they were definitely one of the favorites going in, no one could have predicted that their new superstar sub would just keep his unbelievable level of play up against the best in the world, with everything feeling like they were in a honeymoon phase with Tens, as he dominated on Jet, Raze, and Reyna, picking up the highest ever ACS in an international event that still stands today. And he starts his stand-in performance in Reykjavik against an other favorites in the tournament, Fnatic with everyone eager to see if Tens can continue his otherworldly entrying against Durka. But after Sentinels and Fnatic stayed neck and neck in the first half of Icebox, Tens and the fragging IGL Shazam showed why this version of Sen with Tens as a super sub was just unstoppable, even against the other greats of the era. Tens was just on another level on Reyna, picking up 25 kills while Shazam went off on Jet to mount a 5 round win streak to start their attack. While Mystic played his best to try to keep it close, Tens and Shazam just outshined the abilities of Durka and Boaster as they won Fnatic's pick of Icebox, putting them in the driver's seat for the rest of the match. And going into their favorite map of Haven, Tens knew this is where he could really stake his claim as the best in the world in only his first international match. Putting up an unreal 316 ACS and a rating of 1.46, one of the highest we would see throughout Reykjavik just inching out Durka to push his team past Fnatic in a clear 2-0 sweep, with every Valorant fan focused on this North American team and their super sub as they went through Brazil's team Vikings and South Korea's Dark Horse New Turn, with him picking up a 287 ACS through all four maps, with him on Jet and Reyna looking at just another level than his opponents, with only really his teammate Shazam and Sick looking to be even able to keep up with him. So with those three sweeps, they're now faced up against Fnatic as throughout their lower bracket run, they prove that they're clearly the other best team in the event after being beaten by Sentinels. So this would be the perfect statement for Tens and Sentinels that would make them the undisputed best in the world. And if you thought the pressure would get to the stand-in superstar, you'd be deadly wrong. They first won in overtime on their map pick a split after going up 10 to five, but thanks to Tens and Shazam getting 11 first kills to put them in the player advantage in 58% of the rounds, being the edge they need to take a 1-0 lead, then Tens put a map that would solidify him as the MVP as he went 33 and 19 with a 93% cast and eight first kills to one first death to win a triple overtime with this map being a textbook definition of putting the team on his back. They were able to finish off a perfect Masters run with a 13-11 win on Haven, with Tens not stopping a bit with 6 first kills to 0 first deaths, becoming a Masters winner as just a stand-in. And with that Masters win, Tens would officially be brought in as a permanent member of the team, which is why a lot of newer fans can sometimes forget that he was actually just a new sub that took over the game right when he touched the server with this early Sentinels team. The next notable stand-in after Tens didn't occur until seven international events later, where after the Kings of Asia won the inaugural Pacific League with their brand new gifted duelist something, who lit up the scoreboards even on this insane W Gaming team, they were now going to Masters of Tokyo, 
and they look like the clear favorites to take home the trophy that had been eluding them in their region since finishing second in Copenhagen. But then, they got the worst news they could have gotten so soon before heading out to Japan. So with something out, they needed to act fast to fill in that hole. And this is where the Snex super sub comes in. CGRS, their sixth man since October of 2022, is primarily known as a popular Thai streamer who combines his great technical abilities as a flex player with his energetic and upbeat personality that made him the perfect person to fill in as their sixth man on a team that looked like they'd never really need one as he really was just there to provide the good vibes behind the scenes. But now he would be thrust into competing on the biggest of stages in an international masters on a team that was expected to win the entire thing an impossible task for 99% of players. But for the streamer, he would need to figure it out fast and catch up with this chaotic and speedy team against the best in the world. But lucky for them, they had a bye to the playoffs thanks to their regional dominance, giving them extra time to prep and scout other teams, getting CGRS up to speed as fast as possible. And when it was time to play their opener in playoffs, they were given another lucky draw for their first opponent. They'd be playing their regional rivals DRX, a team they have already faced three times with their only loss being where they were still trying to figure out if Benkai should stay on the team. So this Paper X team had been able to heavily scout this team and understand what they really need to do while DRX has only been able to see this team with CGRS once in league play, which now with some time could look completely different. So Paper X with a stand-in had the element of surprise and they took advantage of it right away. As while CGRS heavily struggled in his first map, the rest of the team dominated with Jing once again proving he's the face of Raze players everywhere. On Gecko though on Bind, their streamer stand-in finally woke up, with him ending the map positive within picking up 4 first kills, leading to another 13-10 win to sweep DRX and move on to the upper semifinals against reigning champions Fnatic. And here was their low point. Fnatic was just too much for this team, as Fnatic was peaking at the perfect time in Masters, making everyone on Paper Rex look like a sub outside of Jing. But after going down 0 and 12 on their attacking half, one of the worst showings by a team in an international ever, they lost 13 to 5. With their map pick of Bind going a bit better, with CGRS actually diffing Leo in their head-to-head. -head. But this Paper Rex team didn't look to have any chance against the Super Team falling down to elimination way earlier than they had hoped, with him looking to yet again be disappointed and CGRS just having to quietly return to being a personality rather than a competitor. But here is where he became the next super sub, and boy was it exciting. First, he faced off against the Pride of China with Kang Kang, who in this Masters had launched himself to international stardom with his unreal opping ability and exhilarating celebrations in his first few matches of Tokyo, and looked to want to eliminate Paper X and continue their underdog run. And with them up 11-4 on their own map pick of Fracture, it looked like that would be the case. But then CGRS on Breach started understanding his role, picking up useful util moments to fault line or flash to slow down scythe pushes, allowing his more technically gifted teammates like Devi or Jing to pick up multi-kills off of it, going from next to zero assists to nine in an eight round win streak making this crazy comeback just what they needed to force an overtime, where they stole away EG's fracture in 14-12 fashion, putting EG in a very tough spot going into split. But then, their IGL Haodong and secondary jet player Smoggy turned out big, falling to a map 3 that could spell the end to their run, ending outside the top 4 like they were expecting for themselves. So on Lotus, CGRS knew it was now or never to really pull his own weight on the team and start allowing his experienced teammates to start relying more on him a bit. So on Gecko, he played his role perfectly on the defense, causing havoc and surviving late into rounds to assist in the retakes, which his Uto is perfect for on sites like B and C, leading to multiple defuses and him winning three 1v1 clutches to give them the lead in this critical deciding map, resulting in a smooth 13-8 victory. Securing them now a top 4 finish, something to be proud of with a stand-in, but now seeing what he can do as a support player for this team, it's clear they wanted to take it all the way, and against the original FNS-led NRG, who were hungry for a Masters Trophy, CGRS needed a career game. And that's what our favorite Thai streamer did. In an epic pearl, both teams went back and forth, but as they went deeper and deeper, it started to become clear that CGRS was on one, with him picking up three 3Ks on that map. They would go to a double overtime, with his play involving CGRS being the absolute difference maker as well as a cannon moment for North American Valorant. Instantly invested. A 1v1 to see who can take this now to map point. CGRS. 
the stand in. He knows he needs to rush this down. He needs to play for the kill. There's not enough time to go for the plan. He's swinging around the corner. And he manages to get it done. Some with a shorty doesn't find him. Paper X. They take it to 14. You got to be kidding me. That's some for Paper X. Then they pulled off a flawless defense to start the match off with them stealing Pearl. But energy with all their collective experience wouldn't go down that easily, at least at this time. And they turned it up, with Som trying to do everything to make up for Pearl, leading them to win 13-6, to put CGRS and Paper X on the brink yet again of elimination. Which would still be a good run for this team with a streamer as a stand-in, but this is when people started associating CGRS with Super Sub. As while the entire map was razor thin, he on Gecko just bared down and did his job, resulting in him barely going negative in KD, but that is easily overlooked due to his four first kills he gained, with three of them coming late in the map leading them past NRG and into the lower finals. A place that no one thought they'd be able to make without their beloved Russian jet. But in the end, CGRS wasn't the same superstar player that Tenz was, as while he did his best throughout their match against EG, it was clear he was the main person slowing down W Gaming, ending the hopes of CGRS and ending his journey as Paper X's super sub. And while his stats weren't what you think of when you think of high impact, the clutches and tough moments he helped his team through in these critical elimination matches to get them within inches of the grand finals appearance is a lot for someone that was just recently a streamer. This story came out of nowhere, as Patty Tech just months before competing with the surprise team of the year, Team Heretics, in two different Masters events, was playing in Spain's tier 2 scene, slowly trying to grind through to the VCT. So when he got the offer to join as a stand-in for Team Heretics, he jumped at the chance. Especially because he would at least, for the kickoff event, be able to play since Heretics Crown Jewel Wu was ineligible to play until a few months into the season when he turned 18. So it would be the perfect time to prove that he deserves to stay in the VCT once his time was up with the team as there wasn't much expectations for this roster, who had just cleaned house from the last team the season before, where they finished near the bottom of the EMEA. And I'm going to skip quickly through the beginning of Paddy Tech and his team's meteoric rise during the kickoff and their eventual collapse in Madrid, as well it did make his name much better known, and showed he wasn't just some temporary stand-in chipped in from tier 2 that would get steamrolled, his journey to super sub status started in his second international event with the team where after it looked like we wouldn't see him again in a Team Heretics jersey, with Woot making his debut, Miniboot unexpectedly opted to sit out due to burnout and academic commitments, meaning that Paddy Tech was once again taking out the mantle as a sub this season, with him determined to truly show he deserves to be the starting lineup in the VCT next year, as this could be his final shot. And in Shanghai, he made his mark on history. And while they didn't need a warm-up game, as Paddy Tech was ready to go when he jumped on the server, it was nice to be able to face a weaker Dragon Ranger gaming team that would end up falling out of the event without picking up a map, with him top fragging on Icebox as KO, leading to two blowout maps to win to face against their first true test of the Masters, G2, who had just been getting better and better each match they played together in Tier 1 Valorant, and this was going to be their breakout event. But while players like Benji, Fishy, or Woot stumbled in the two final maps that saw them lose, Paddy Tech made himself look like the star of the team, with him doing what he can in whatever role they needed. Playing Raze on Split, where he did his best to keep them in, but ultimately wasn't enough as they fell to elimination, with him in a deciding match to see whether they qualify for the playoffs, or fall out yet again in the opening stage. And with them facing against the unpredictable FPX team, who has been using completely unique agent comps to their advantage, they needed Paddy Tech's role flexibility more than ever. And when looking back at this match a couple months later, it makes me wonder if they would have been able to survive this elimination if Miniboo was in rather than Paddy Tech, as he proved invaluable on Sunset. And then in a must win on Icebox, where we saw Woot put up 37 kills, Paddy Tech, being the super sub he is, pulls out this, this play. Benji Fish is still alive, and now it's back up online. They've been able to hold him back so far. Ooh. Oh, and now the spike is sitting on the ground! Oh, it's all on to Berlin! Bluff. Oh no. He's going in for the fight. No. He has one. And now the Kobe he should have enough time to play it. Does Boo challenge? Does he swing? Yes, he does. He's up in his face, and that's enough to stop the play. Eventually leading to a date with the hometown heroes EDG in the first round of playoffs. And this is where Paddy Tech and Heretics were unexpectedly crowned the destroyers of China, with them going a perfect 3-0 against Chinese teams, finishing off EDG much easier than FPX with Paddy Tech having a quieter supporting game on KO and Viper, while Woot continued to have a world-class Masters debut, 
sweeping EDG 2-0 to advance to the semifinals. But this would go like their first matchup against G2, close but not close enough, losing to be sent down to elimination in three maps. And this wouldn't be as simple as the first time they went down, as they would have to win three straight matches against the best of the best to make it to the grand finals and compete for the trophy they were favorites of just before Miniboo announced his break. So they'd need their super sub Patty Tech to rise to the occasion. And that's when he helped push forward Valorant history in this underdog run, with them not dropping a single map against Foot, 100 Thieves, and then in their third match against G2, finally overcoming the North American team in a 3-0 sweep. With Patty Tech during these three elimination matches, putting up a scoreline on KO, Fade, and Viper, with a 221 ACS, 16 first kills to only 7 first deaths, looking like a normal member of a pro team that could easily win a Masters with him proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that he'd be one of the hottest free agents this offseason, helping them reach the grand finals against Gen G, with them in the best possible spot to end their dream story on top for everyone on Heretics. But instead, Gen G's story ended with the happy ending, with them blowing out this young Team Heretics team in the final two maps, to make it not feel as close as the scoreline showed, with everyone struggling around Patty Tech as he just had to watch the trophy ceremony from afar showing that he's determined to return to the biggest stages, but next time as a core member of a top team.